In this video we're going to talk about three different places that you can store data in, in NetLogo, three different variable types. The first is globals, the second are local variables, and the third are agent-based variables. Let's start with global variables. You're already used to or know about global variables, at least in terms of sliders. Here's a slider uh, called numturtles, which has a global variable called numturtles associated with it and that variable numturtles currently set at 27 is accessible throughout your code everywhere so you can look at or change numturtles inside your code any in any procedure or reporter that you have now there are ways of creating global variables that are not tied to sliders and the way to do that is to use the word globals at the very top of your code uh, followed by an open square bracket and then to create the names of your global variables let us say score and who knows Fred and also George and we'll close it with a closed square bracket we've created three global variables called uh, score Fred and George and initially when the program is born <clears throat> they're all set to zero and in fact if the observer uh, uses the clear all function at any time it will again set all three global variables to zero so here we've set all global variables to zero but using the set command our set command is the uh, basic way that we can change all variable types we can set any one of the variables to anything that we please we can set the score to 100 we can set Fred to the word Harry and we can set George to um, anything Thereafter, these variables will retain their values and throughout any piece of your code you can change that value. For instance, uh, t if you have a winning procedure then you can set the score to score plus 10 and the score has just been uh, incremented or increased by 10 when this command is executed. So global variables are a useful place to actually store both uh, character strings like uh, Harry and anything in this case and values and the values can be uh, whole numbers or uh, decimal values. Uh, another place that you can store variables that might be useful are what are called local variables. So let's suppose that you have a um, procedure called um, do this and uh, you have a big calculation to do. Uh, calculation involves let's say a10 of, of x core and y core and we're going to take the sine of that and we're going to add x core squared etc and this calculation we'd like to do but we'd like to check whether this calculation is between let's say as a value between let's say 4 and 6 and so to do that we would have to do the calculation twice once to check it against 4 and another to check it against 6 so if this quantity is greater than 4 and this same quantity we'll copy and paste is less than 6 then uh, do something else I don't know um, notice that NetLogo will have to calculate this entire expression twice which is a waste so let's see if we can um, help NetLogo calculate it only once to do that we can actually create a new variable just temporarily um, we'll call that variable a and uh, we're creating that variable to hold this whole value over here 
what let does is it creates a variable and immediately fills it with a useful value. Once that variable is created, we can manipulate it. Um, and we can do this a is greater than 4 and a is less than 6. Do something. That seems a lot more uh, interesting and easy, especially if a has a particular uh, value that has some meaning for you. For instance, uh, the distance to mom. And now we've created the distance to mom and we checked whether it's between 4 and 6. We can also, having created the distance to mom, we can um, use it and reset it. We can set distance to mom to 12 later. So uh, once in play, it is a general variable that can be uh, used and changed, but it will last only inside the procedure that it was created. It was created here, and when the procedure finishes executing, uh, dist to mom disappears um, until the next time do this is created you know, or is actually executed uh, then another dist to mom will be created and a new value will be put into it uh, and it will it will be created anew and then it will be eliminated when the end is reached or the the procedure exits finally something tremendously useful um, agent based variables. Uh, we know that t turtles and patches have properties and we have a list of that properties um, for turtles there's the X core and Y core and size and shape and color etc and for patches there's PX core and PY core and um, P color etc. Wouldn't it be great if we can actually add to those properties of both patches and turtles? And the answer is we can. Uh, to add properties to patches and turtles, we again go up to the top of the code area. And for turtles, we say turtles-own and a list of new properties. We can actually create gender as a property. Uh, we can create... Um, previous position as a property uh, and we've now created two turtles we've created turtles with two more properties for instance if we now nothing named do has been defined okay let's get rid of this which seems to be bothering us altogether and we'll go back and we'll get rid of this also and let's create a turtle and there it is and let's take a look at its property sheet at this point we'll examine and notice that we have gender and previous position down here it may be hard to read but they're both filled with values of zero let's go back to the code um, we can create when we create a turtle or two or three or four or ten we can set the previous position to let's say zero and we can set about half of the turtles to male and half the turtles to female and we can do that by saying if random two equals equals zero if else random two equals zero then set gender to female and in the other case set gender to male and now about half of the ten turtles that we've created are male and half are female roughly um, why might we want previous position? Let us suppose that every time the turtle passes from the left hand side of the screen to the right hand side of the screen, every time it crosses that vertical boundary, um, we want to increase the score uh, by one because the, the player of this game or something like that has succeeded in moving the turtle 
uh, to a, a harder place, namely the right hand side of the screen. And so in the Go procedure, we will we'll ask our turtles um, if your previous position was less than zero and your current position is greater than zero, then set the score to score plus one. And this is true for every turtle. And having done that, and uh, we'll let's say move one, now we'll set the previous, we will, before moving, we will set the previous position to the current position, and now we will move, and the previous position will store the just before the move position of the turtle, its X position, and uh, we can check whether in any move subsequently um, it has crossed over the line because previous position holds on to the uh, previous position of that particular turtle. Notice that every single turtle has a gender and a previous position and they can be different. And that's all.